Today we want to talk about a process that's vital to life on planet Earth. That process is called photosynthesis. If we look at the equation for what happens in this process, we have six carbon dioxide molecules, six water molecules, plus the energy, usually of sunlight, which will allow us to build a glucose molecule, C6H12O6, and give off a very important end product, oxygen. This oxygen that's given off in the process of photosynthesis is a gas, and it too is vital to respiratory processes that occur on planet Earth. Cells need this oxygen for cell respiration. But in the process of photosynthesis, we're dealing with only a few organisms on planet Earth that have this capability. These organisms are called autotrophs. And on planet Earth, the autotrophs basically include plants, some photosynthetic protists, and some photosynthetic prokaryotes. I'm going to be talking primarily as though plants were our major photosynthetic organisms here, but any of the other two, as long as they have the capabilities of taking in light energy in certain pigment molecules, will be able to make food uh, in some manner. This carbon dioxide, which is a part of our equation here, comes to the plant from the atmosphere. That carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere. The water that serves as a raw material in this equation comes through plant roots our light energy is primarily when we're talking about this process solar energy and as I said we're building the glucose molecule which serves as food for all organisms on planet earth oxygen once again is given off as a gas the primary photosynthetic organ in plants is going to be the plant leaf. And as you're taking this lab or taking the lecture uh, class for Principles 1, you're going to be studying various parts of the plant leaf that are going to be very important in this photosynthetic process. For example, you'll be looking at some cells that are called mesophyll cells. Those mesophyll cells have the green pigment chlorophyll, that pigment plays a very large role in the photosynthetic process. You'll also be looking at some structures called stomata. Those stomata are openings primarily on the underside of a plant leaf. that allow for gas exchange. That gas exchange will allow CO2 into the plant leaf and it will allow oxygen to exit the plant leaf at the end of the photosynthetic process. So these structures, stomata, are going to be very important. They also play a role in uh, sometimes allowing for water vapor to leave the plant, and this can be crucial uh, if the plant loses too much water, then these stomata are going to close to conserve that water so that it will, uh, so the plant will not die, but it will shut down the photosynthetic process or either stop it temporarily as the stomata close. So these two structures in that plant leaf are very, very important. The mesophyll cells and the stomata. Then as we look at this concept of using light energy in the process of photosynthesis, 
What's going to happen here is that we're going to use certain wavelengths of light in the photosynthetic process. The primary wavelengths of light, visible light, that are used in the photosynthetic process are going to be the blue and the red wavelengths of light. We say that these blue and red wavelengths of light are absorbed by pigment molecules and the green wavelengths of light are reflected. The wavelengths of light that are absorbed correspond to the wavelengths of light that will be used in photosynthesis. The wavelengths of light that are reflected are not used in the photosynthetic process. So light is going to be a very important component here in the photosynthetic process. Pigments are also very important. We've already mentioned the primary pigment, which is chlorophyll, but in reality there are four very important pigments involved in photosynthesis. There is a chlorophyll A, a chlorophyll B, a xanthophyll pigment, which is sort of a yellow-colored pigment, and carotenoid pigments, which are orange. These three, chlorophyll B, xanthophyll pigments, and carotenoid pigments, are considered to be accessory pigments. They assist chlorophyll A in the photosynthetic process. And in class, you'll be talking uh, a little more deeply about how this photosynthetic process takes place. There are some reactions that must occur in the light. We call these light-dependent reactions. And there are other processes that can occur in the dark. They don't have to occur in the dark, and so we call these light-independent. reactions. These must occur in the light. They depend on light. These, it doesn't matter. The reactions will take place whether or not light is present. But the ultimate result will be, as we move through several different steps of these light-dependent and light-independent reactions, is that we will be able to, what we call, fix carbon dioxide, a process that we call carbon fixation as the plant utilizes a cycle called the Calvin cycle to ultimately make glucose. That glucose serves as food for not only the plant that makes the glucose, but also as a food source for all living things on planet Earth. Without this process, life on earth would be non-existent.